born in a poor mining town on the foothills of Wales. My name is Arthur Scargill, and this is my story. My old pa said that miners were loyal folk and slow to anger. But when the news got out that the cobalt was going to close down the pits and go, well, I could feel their loyalty turning to bitter hatred. It was going to be the end of our little town. I guess we all knew it. Many said I was to blame. Being the only guy who could read or write, I guess they looked to me for an easy answer. Well, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't have one. It was like I was sitting on a powder keg, just waiting for a spark. What's the matter, Arthur? Two chicken shit scared to bring the miners out on strike. Yeah. <laughs> He's scared of the prime minister. <laughs> yeah. He's frightened of a woman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, whoops a daisy. I'm so sorry, Mr. Compromise. <laughs> what is this? How to sell out to the coal board and let down all the guys? <laughs> He's too busy fooling around with that school teacher to fight for socialism. That's right, that's
Well, isn't Arthur's little school teacher? Yeah, she sure is sexy for a scab. <laughs> Get out of here, you animals. Arthur's doing his best for you. Yeah. Well, you tell Arthur we got a little message for him. Right, boys? Yep. No. No, stop it. Daddy, what's job security? It's, uh, it's something everyone needs, Tammy. Even you, Daddy? Even me, Tammy. You run along now, okay? Your daddy's got a right to the queen, you hear? Your Majesty, I guess you may have heard of me. My name is Arthur Scott. said he saw someone go down there. What? It was a little girl, Arthur. No. They found this. Oh, my God. I couldn't stop her, Arthur. She was crying and acting like a mad thing. What's the gas weed out? Two minutes, maybe less. Please, don't do this, Arthur. Give me that budgie. You haven't got a chance in hell. That's my daughter down there. It's okay, honey. Daddy's here. You okay? My leg's so funny. Jesus, it's okay, honey. I'm going home. Daddy, will you and Mommy still be friends again? Oh, yes, Tammy. From now on, it's just going to be the three of us. You and me and... Holy shit. has gone too far. Come on, where is he, Wayne? <laughs> Even a thousand militants broke into the dynamite store. They took all the dynamite and they headed for Sellafield. Oh my God, they're going to blow the nuclear reactor. Oh, Arthur. Look off the Tammy for me. Slime? Yes, sir. I need your bike. She's already 
for you, Mr. Scargill. Thanks, sir. I had a machine every part of it myself, Mr. Scargill. I know. She's got the heart of a lion and the wings of a dove. Just give her up the 2,000 rails and give her a hand. She won't let you down. Slim? Yes, sir. You're all right. There goes the fastest trade union leader you will ever see, sir. Now to strike. This isn't the light touch. Too late, Arthur. Time for talking is past. It's either coal or nuclear power. Which side are you on? Listen, guys, just give me one out to win this strike. For all of us. I think we're all a little tired of your fancy moderate ideas, Arthur. Right, boys? Yep. I want to sort this thing out right here and now. Come on, I'm begging you, Dutch. One lousy hour, that's all I need. Okay, if I don't succeed, go ahead. Fly thing to Mars. Now, the Sam Hillary is supposed to know whether or not you succeeded. Anyone got a radio? Right here. Okay. Radio 4, 3 o'clock, today in Parliament. Come on. One out, Dutch. One eye. Which way to London? Well, the road to London is that way. But if a man was in a hurry, Drive straight through that graveyard yonder. Thanks, Pop. Remind me to put a gate in that fence, boy. And the and award the for the best, best comedy, comedy performance. Gentlemen, um, 
I want to apologize to this house for this intrusion. But I think you'll understand when you hear what I have to say. Mr. Scoggle? You may have your say. Mr. Speaker, is that a wool sack you're sitting on? Yes, young man, it is. My old, um, my old daddy told me about that wool sack. He was, a, he was a strange old gaffer. He believed a lot of strange things, did my old daddy. He believed in the dignity of labor and uh, loyalty to his fellow man. But above all, he believed that that old sack, that, um, that simple bag of ancient wool, symbolized everything that makes our country the greatest democracy in the world. You guys on the right, and you guys on the left. Was my daddy wrong? Was he wrong to believe all those things? I don't think so. Because I want to tell you, gentlemen, out there, in every narrow street, in every northern town, there's thousands of guys like my old daddy, men who want to work, want to be proud. Man who would follow you gentlemen to hell on back if you so demanded. <clears throat> I'd only ask in return. It's a little faith. A little trust. A little hope. Is that too much to ask? Gentlemen, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have children. Children who love you. Uh, take your God even. I, uh, I have a little girl. Her name's Tammy. And, uh, like a lot of six-year-olds, she sure asks a lot of tough questions. Just like a mama. Uh, well, last night, she came to me and she asked me a question I, that this father could not answer. She said to me, um, Daddy, will you always be a coal miner? I, um, I looked at her. It was the kind of worst moment of my life. And then uh, kind of small tears rolling down her cheeks, you know. And as I held her then so close, <laughs> I vowed I'd come here and, and sort this thing out. Because you gentlemen, and only you, can answer my daughter's question. That's all I gotta say. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm all through. Well, uh, gentlemen, you've all heard what uh, Mr. Scoggle has had to say. I think it's time we took a vote on this matter. can go back to work. And in future, Mr. Scoggle, I think this house would appreciate it if you conducted your business in a more formal manner. Yes, sir. 
Now, if, if you'll excuse us, we have a country to run. Thank you, sir. God bless the United Kingdom. God bless us all! <laughs> Very brave day, Jane. I know. Thank you, Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> 